Hi! Hi. I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. It's spooky season again. In our Enchantarium Halloween tradition, for this year's collab, we'll be making a Winx Club custom. This year, we're reimagining Layla, or Aisha, the fairy of waves, into her evil counterpart. Let's get started. Last time we made Layla, we used a Claudine doll. And I think this time this base will suit our concept too. All our Monster High customs are made from secondhand dolls, and she has very loose legs, but that's not a problem at all. At the beginning of this year, Fate the Wings Saga came out on Netflix, and it wanted to portray Wings characters in a darker set, but I don't think it succeeded. I want our Dark Layla to be spooky, but with a lot of colors and bright features, because that's the vibe of the original Wings cartoon. Colorful fashion and magical designs. I just want to show that you can make a darker rendition of a character and still use light colors and have fun with the design. I took off the wolf ears and rooted her hair off camera because I didn't feel like recording on that day. Sometimes you just want to do your stuff without everybody watching you. I used two shades of brown and some pink nylon to do the front highlights. The hair needs to be secured with polymer glue so it won't fall off while brushing and styling. I secured the hair with a cloth and sprayed the face with two coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat Sealant wearing a protective mask because that stuff is dangerous for your lungs. I'm starting the face from the eyes, being absolutely not in focus, but believe me, I'm sketching the basic shape of the eyes. I'm using soft pastels to gradually build up the lip color and doing the same with watercolor pencils on the eyes. I'm drawing short and pointy eyebrows with a dark brown watercolor pencil. I know that all our recent dolls have the same type of brows, both Sula and Don have them too. And I blame my love for Science Officer Spock for this. Sorry. <laughs> I just love Star Trek. The easiest thing you can do to make a character more spooky is to give them black sclera, so I did exactly that. Now it's time for the makeup. I'm using a black chalk pastel to do the basic eyeshadow and then I add more color. It looked really good before sealing, but after a coat of MSC, it looks like mud. Light pastels need a bright surface to turn out vibrant. I took my airbrush and acrylic paints and added a light blue mist on the sides of the face. Then I tried to blend it with the skin with yellow, green, blue and pink pastels. And after spraying, there's no mud effect, so I call this a success. After a quick fix of the eyes and brows, I can start adding details. I'm highlighting the eyelids, the spot under the brow, nose, corners of the mouth, the upper lip, and a few loose hair on the brows. I'm adding lashes and keep applying pastels to build the opacity of the eyeshadow. After a layer of Perlex powders and MSC, I'm moving on to acrylic paints. Basically, I'll be enhancing all the things I did with white pencil, but this time with paint and a brush. To give the eyes a mysterious glow effect, I paint the irises with white first and then build the color with watercolor pencils. They are a bit more greenish-grey in real life. For some reason on camera they show more blue than they really are. I wasn't satisfied with the opacity of the black pencil on the lashes, so I went over them with black paint. The only disadvantage is that it has this weird shine, but I hope with a few layers of MSC it can turn matte. Painting the waterline looks so easy, but in reality I'm holding my breath and doing it really slow. Same with the white lashes that I later painted brown because they were a bit too bright. As a last step, I decided to pack these micro glitters on the rainbow part for some additional magical sparkle. Let's go back to hair. We were thinking of doing a head full of braids, but nylon is not the easiest material to style, so I'm doing a lot of small braids that will blend with the rest of the hair. I like Claudine's wearable hands, but I'm going to swap them for these Laguna hands. Layla is a fairy of water, and our version will be an evil underwater creature. That's why we don't need her wonky loose legs. We're going to make her a ball-jointed mermaid tail, so we need something that can hold the string and I'm using a broken needle. I cut it and fixed it in place with two-part epoxy glue. We need to spookify her design a bit more. Skeletons are spooky, right? Let's make her a top that will resemble ribcage bones out of epoxy sculpt. I also covered the parts where the needle was peeking through for extra protection. 
I took the airbrush again to make a fade from the hands to the elbows and also painted the chest. I'm adding the same type of gradient as on her face with pastels. Now the main course, the tail. We thought about making it as a solid piece, but it would be very difficult to add details that we planned. The main idea is to make a translucent mermaid tail with fish bones inside. Layla has the power of controlling water and making a substance called Morphix, which is a pink gum-like material that she uses in battle and to create stuff. And so we thought for her evil counterpart, a skeleton fish spine covered with this Morphix thing would be perfect. I 3D sculpted the spine and the tail in Blender and cut into parts. We didn't want too many pieces, so the movement is not spectacular, but I think for a project like this, it will do. I printed the tail parts on our new Elegoo Mars 2 Pro in a custom translucent resin color that I mixed. The parts need to be cleaned first. My process for this is to take the parts off the build platform with a spatula and then put it in a thick plastic bag, to which I add my cleaning liquid, IPA in the case of the resin I used. I then put it in an ultrasonic cleaner, which is filled with water. This is to avoid the IPA in the cleaner. After the washing cycle is completed, I pour the IPA back to my jar and take out the print. For this particular model, I used a straw cleaner brush thing to make sure all of the uncured resin is scrubbed out of the fish bones on the inside. After removing the supports, this is what the parts look like. As you can see, there is some roughness where the supports were, but we need these areas to be smooth for the ball joints to work, so I'm going to sand it down. I used a pretty coarse grit sandpaper because I know I'm going to cover the whole thing in resin later. To make everything uniform, I lightly scuffed all the surfaces so the resin sticks. This made the pieces quite cloudy, but don't worry. The resin will bring back the glossy finish to the pieces and reveal the bone structure on the inside. I put the pieces on barbecue sticks and glazed the segments with UV resin using a brush. I cured every layer in my UV lamp. They look like very tasty strawberry lollipops, the perfect candy for this Halloween season. After the final cure, we can move on to the fish bones. To make the structure on the inside pop, I will use epoxy resin. I support my pieces on a piece of blue tack so that the spine is going horizontally. Then I mix my resin, according to manufacturer instructions, and add a bunch of white pigment. To apply it to the inside of the segments, I will use a syringe. This was not easy because the bones were curved and very small, so if I poured too much too fast, it would just trap an air bubble at the tip of the bone. I was holding the piece against the light, so I could better see where the resin was flowing. A bent wire helped to release the bubbles a bit. After the one side had cured, I repeated the process with the pieces upside down to complete the look. This is how the parts turned out. One thing I didn't predict is that the curve of the joints and sockets will distort the image of the bones inside. It's a designing issue that probably can be fixed in the concepting stage, but the fish bones wouldn't have the same spacing or I would have to make one bone for one element, and it would be either too many elements or too little bones. I'm going to string the tail using this elastic band. The last piece will be the turning point when the string will go up again. I also added a jewelry wire to make the posing a little bit better. I struggled a bit to tie the elastic around the needle inside of her chest, so I did it off camera, but after that, it works! Now it's time for a fin. I want it to be skeleton-like as well, and to cover the wire I'm using silk clay, which is the type of very lightweight clay that air dries. It's not the easiest to form, and you can't make details with it, but I was hoping to keep the posability, which would be impossible with epoxy clay. To make it stick a little bit better, I'm covering the wire with pieces of medical tape. And this is how it looks. A bit wonky, I would say, but I think it kind of suits the Halloween skeleton aesthetic, right? To add a bit more detail, I'm gluing these thingies on the last part of the tail with two-part epoxy glue. 
If you watch us, you know we love to use these iridescent vinyls and this time I want to use only the colored part. So I'm separating the reflective foil from the pink vinyl. I'm going to make some colorful fins with it. I'm connecting the wire pieces to form an armature. Then I sandwich the wire between two pieces of the vinyl and press it with a hair straightener. Now I can trim the excess in a fin shape. I didn't like how pointy the first version was, so I trimmed it a bit more in a rounder shape. Looks good, but needs more detail. To make it more cohesive with the rest of the mermaid parts, I'm painting bone-like lines where the wire is. She looks great so far, but to be honest, she doesn't look like Layla with straight hair like this. So let's fix it with plastic straws and bobby pins. I'm twisting the hair around the straw and securing it with two bobby pins. Off camera, I dunk the whole installation in a bowl of boiling hot water and then in icy cold water to set the curls. The next day, when the hair dries, I can untangle the straws and release the curls. I was worried that the braids may not hold, but they look pretty okay. The ends need a bit of trim and the ears can be installed in place. I'm going to make simple hair decorations from beads, pins and brown thread. I pin them to the head to look like tiny drops of water. We have all the elements in place, now it's time to spice the whole design with some more tiny details. I'm painting the webbing with gloss varnish to make it look wet. Then I'm adding drops of the same varnish to imitate scales on her arms and forehead. I decided that there's too little sparkle and I'm gluing tiny rhinestones to the ears, forehead and the tail. The last minute craft is a crown made out of wire and epoxy clay. I made it look like the big skeleton fin, so the accessory on the top is similar to the bottom part. It makes a nice visual closure. And with this, the doll is ready. This is how she turned out. We've been thinking about this concept for Layla for a long time, so I'm actually very happy to see our vision come to life. It took a lot of planning and considering many technological processes of how to make the bones inside a ball jointed tail. Although it was frustrating at times to see our ideas fail when confronted with reality, when it finally works, it's very rewarding. Do you want to see more Evil Wings fairies? We already made Dark Bloom and Layla, and there are still some fairies left. Who do you want to see next? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to watch our Doll Customizer Friends Halloween videos. Check out The Doll Fairy, Mr. Super Customs, Anastasia Customs, Kairos Workshop, Etelon, Jackie O, HLE Crafts, Hexgen, The Dolly Geek, Valkyrie's World, Moonlight Jewel, and delightful. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Boo!